Hello everyone, uh, this is uh, Grandmaster Viktor Mikhailevsky. Um, I'm going to show you uh, how to prepare for, the, uh, for your opponents. Uh, based on uh, a few recent examples of uh, my own games. Uh, the first example is the last round of the Maya Open in uh, Portugal, uh, in which I faced uh, uh, a very strong American uh, Grandmaster uh, Liang, a wonder. I played with the white pieces and prepared uh, uh, the following line d4 knight f6 c4 e6 knight c3 in fact i uh, was prepared for both the nimzo indian which he also played with bishop b4 and the line uh, which occurred in the game which is d5 c takes knight takes e4 knight takes b takes and c5 uh, I could see that my opponent played this line quite a lot, both uh, offline and uh, online. And so I decided to prepare uh, a good idea against this system. Uh, basically, Black's idea behind the move c5 is to play next uh, c takes d4, then check on b4. Black. Uh, castles quickly and then develops his uh, queenside uh, pieces and so I thought uh, I'll go for the line with rook b1 this way white stops uh, the idea of bishop b4 check so the move makes a lot of sense uh, black played bishop e7 which I expected now knight f3 and short castle this is a normal theoretical position which occurred uh, in the tournament practice many many times uh, but uh, i saw a, a recent idea which is not very popular yet but extremely interesting the idea of h4 in fact this move uh, is getting popular in many different uh, openings and uh, also in this line it seems uh, it seems to be very interesting so white's idea is uh, straightforward white wants to go h5 h6 in order to weaken uh, black's uh, king side and if after h5 black plays h6 which happened in the game white brings his rook via h3 to g3 and creates a pretty strong attack on the king side so let's see uh, uh, what happened in that game. Uh, I wonder played b6, so I continued with h5. Allowing the move uh, h6 is probably not the best idea because then the pawn will be very good on h6. And so black played h6. And now white plays rook h3. As I mentioned, the idea behind this move is to play rook g3 to pin the g pawn and then white will also have a threat of bishop takes h6. So black plays king h8, moving the king from the g file uh, well in advance. R still rook g3. And now c takes d4. And this is exactly the position I expected uh, before the game. Because uh, play of Black's play is uh, rather natural and logical. The exchange on d4 is also rather typical for this position. And uh, in a couple of previous games, White answered the move uh, c takes d4 with the recapture, with the c pawn, which is definitely a good move. Uh, but I thought, why not to try the direct uh, attack by means of queen d2? And that's the line I prepared for the game. 
One of uh, White's ideas is to sacrifice the rook. Once again, a very direct uh, threat. Then the queen gets to h6. At and white may create a very strong attack. In some lines, white can even play c takes d4 and bring this rook to the g file. So I thought it might be interesting. Queen d2. And now my opponent uh, made a mistake, uh, which is also very understandable. He played rook to g8. So he wants to stop the idea of rook takes g7 by recapturing with his own rook. But the text uh, has a very uh, clear disadvantage. The f7 pawn is now unprotected. And white can take an immediate advantage of this fact. So le let's see what would be better than playing uh, rook g8. And what I uh, also looked at before the game. One of, uh, one of uh, better moves in this position would be the move d takes c3. Uh, the White takes with the queen. Queen takes c3. And then if black plays bishop f6, which also looks kind of natural. In fact, black gets under a very strong attack. e5, the bishop goes to e7, and now bishop takes h6. Once again, white sacrificing something on the king side. Black has to take back. G takes h6, and then queen goes to e3, creating a direct threat of checkmate in one. So black has nothing better than to play bishop g5. Oops, sorry. Let me get back to this position. So black has nothing better than bishop g5. If, if he plays king h7 instead, white has a very strong check from d3 forcing the king back. So black played, I mean, black uh, has to play bishop g5 and then simply knight takes, h takes and rook takes. And uh, even though black stopped the immediate threats, white's attack is uh, extremely strong. I can show you one of the possible uh, ways uh, for black for uh, Black to continue. F5, trying to open the seventh rank for defense. And then white can go rook g6, rook to f7, rook d1, bringing another piece into attack, queen f8, and rook to d6. And if you look at this position, even though uh, white is down a piece, but uh, uh, black's uh, pieces on the queen side are completely out of play and very difficult to develop them. For instance, if you go knight a6, white plays queen g5 with the threat of rook d8. Black can try to stop uh, that idea with bishop b7, but then rook g takes e6. Now the sixth rank is open for white's rooks. And white is going to play rook h6 next. So black can try rook h7, then still the rook is going to h6. Black finally brings his last piece into play, but it turns out to be too late. White can simply protect the e5 pawn with a 4. Knight c5, bishop c4, knight e4, and then just rook takes, king takes, and a, and a nice final touch. Bishop g8 check. So in case of queen takes g8, uh, black gets checkmated on h6. And if the king goes to h8, rook h6 check, winning the queen and obtaining a winning position. So all of this uh, uh, could have happened if black played bishop f6 in this position. 
So the only defense after d takes c3, queen takes c3 is the move e5. And even in this case, uh, white's attack is uh, pretty strong. So le let's get back to the game now. So uh, as we said, uh, black was afraid of rook takes g7 sacrifice and played rook to g8. Avoiding the idea of rook takes g7, but uh, as we said, the f7 uh, square is now weak. And I decided to take an immediate advantage of this fact and played knight to e5. In fact, white is already clearly better. And it's uh, not so easy to get such a nice position out of the opening against 2650 uh, uh, rated player. Right, so, so the opening line worked really well in this game. I'll show you what happened in a few moves. So my opponent played queen e4, which was also a mistake, in, in fact. The only defense would be queen f8, but it's uh, a little bit anti-intuitive to put the queen on f8. When white can play rook f3, the f-pawn is blocked. Uh, I mean, the f-pawn is pinned. The right DS is knight g6 as well. Looks extremely dangerous, but in fact, here black still retains uh, some chances that's one of the possible continuations here now uh, black cannot take the bishop in view of knight takes f7 check and e5 opening the light squares for the uh, bishop or the queen uh, but in fact, black can play bishop takes e5, sacrificing the queen and staying in the game. So that would be the best defense. But uh, he played queen, e queen e8, which looks rather natural. So uh, I decided to put even more pressure on the f7 pawn. And one of the key ideas is that if black plays bishop to f6, white can play rook g6, a nice rook sacrifice. In fact, the move is a double attack on f6 and h6. So if black takes the knight, then rook h6 leads to an immediate checkmate. And if instead of taking the knight, black takes my rook, then I can play knight takes g6, king h7, and e5. And this way white opens the light squares again. The idea is to play queen e4. And if black stops the idea of queen e4, by the way, queen e4 followed by knight f8 and queen h7 checkmate. So that's a deadly idea. And so if black is trying to stop it with bishop b7, then white plays e takes f6, threatening to play f6, f7. And in case of e5, the queen still gets to this uh, diagonal and uh, black is in trouble. And so my opponent decided uh, uh, to meet queen f4 with a move f6. But also this move has a drawback. Now the g6 square is weak. And so the knight can get there. Knight g6 check. King g7 and another important move e5. Not allowing black to play e6 e5. So black tried to block the diagonal with the move uh, f5 a move like bishop b7 uh, doesn't really help because white takes bishop takes and then uh, bishop to d3 with an extremely strong attack 
so black played f5 and then suddenly uh, white changes the vector of the attack and plays queen to f3 and suddenly uh, black realizes that the rook on a8 is trapped if black plays knight c6 then after knight takes e7 he loses a piece the knight is pinned and after queen e7 simply queen takes c6 Uh, so uh, it's uh, already a lost position uh, here on move uh, 18. Very surprising that right after the opening you can get a winning position against uh, against such a strong player. So so the opening idea was extremely important here. So now uh, and. Uh, I went on to win this game. My opponent fa found still uh, uh, some ideas how to put uh, some resistance in this game. But anyway, I managed to win the game and the tournament, by the way. This was the last round game. So a win in this game was very important. Le let's look at another example, which is in some way similar to this one. In this game, uh, uh, also a last round game, uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the tournament, in, uh, in the open tournament in Toronto, I played uh, against uh, a young uh, feeding master, Kelly Berda, uh, with the white pieces again. Started the game again with the move d4. The knight goes to f6. c4. e6. Knight c3. Bishop to b4. I knew that my opponent is going to play the Nimzo. And so I prepared this line with f3 d5 a3 bishop takes c3 b takes c3 and c5 these are just the starting moves of this uh, system white takes c takes d5 knight takes d5 d takes c5 and queen a5 all of this is a well-known theory e4 black plays knight f6 that's one of the possible retreats of the knight taking on c3 is not a good idea because of queen d2 followed by bishop b2 taking with the queen is just impossible in view of bishop d2 the rook is protected and black loses the knight so black played knight f6 as i said there are also other retreats of the knight white uh, protects the c5 pawn with bishop e3 that's more important that this pawn is more important than the c3 pawn so now black castled and the idea which i prepared is even uh, uh, less popular than uh, in the first game but the move is the same h4 once again the idea is to create an attack on the uh, king side by means of h5 h6 like in the previous game and fa in fact first i saw this idea in uh, in the game of uh, anish giri who played it in a blitz game and won uh, very convincingly uh, so we're gonna see this game shortly so uh, black played knight fd7 in both uh, my game and the Giri's game. By the way, by the way, there was another game in the recent World Cup, in which uh, White also won with this uh, line, with H4. So as you can see, this idea of H4, H5, 
exists in uh, uh, different uh, openings, different opening lines, and it's it might be very interesting. So once again, white plays h5, and the idea is similar to play h6. So black played h6, and this time instead of the maneuver rook h3, rook g3, like in the uh, first game, white plays g2, g4, and goes for the direct attack. So the idea is to play g5, and after black takes, to go for h6. So my opponent played f6, in fact a very reasonable move, which uh, I didn't expect uh, uh, during my preparation for the game. But let's see what happens if uh, black takes the pawn on c5. That's what happened in uh, Giri's game. Uh, there is a question what stops black from taking the pawn on c3. Black can take the pawn now, but uh, why just plays king f2? And the problem is later he will be unable to take the c5 pawn in view of rook c1. So he'll have to waste even more time removing the queen from uh, c3. And time is really important here because black is completely undeveloped. And uh, le let's come back to Giri's game, in which uh, black played knight takes c5. So white continued with g5. And after rook d8, which looks very natural to bring the rook uh, into play with the tempo, white played queen c2, h takes g5 and h6. Opening the H file. Black's only attempt to keep the H file closed is G7, G6. But then white plays H7 check. The king goes to H8. White cannot play bishop D4 right away because the C pawn is pinned. And so instead, Anish played knight to H3. A very nice move. The knight is going to g5 and then eventually to f7. Black tried to develop his knight, knight bd7, knight takes g5 and protects the f7 pawn with the rook from f8. But then white played f4 preparing the move bishop d4. The immediate bishop d4 would be answered by e5. That's why white starts with f4. So black played f7, f6. And simply the knight goes to f3. Now black still has problems with development and a very weak king. The game ended in just a few moves here. Black played queen to a4, and after exchange of queens, white got to the dark squares by means of e5. Black took, knight takes e5, the knight is coming to g6, so it has to be captured. And a nice intermediate move, bishop to d4. So now the knight is, the bishop is coming to e5. And white's attack is just decisive here. Black tried to give up an exchange with rook f5, but white doesn't even take the knight and played the bishop d3. A huge attack, and uh, black just resigned. So that was, uh, this was played in the game in, a blitz in the Blitz game Giri Lazavik earlier this year. So I, I saw this game bef before my game and thought it might be a good idea to try something similar. Right, so yeah, but my opponent uh, sought here for a, wi for a while and found an interesting defense. He played f7, f6. 
a very reasonable move which stops the idea of g5. So I played queen to b3, putting pressure on the e6 pawn, and then knight to a6, a very strong move. If black plays knight takes c5, winning back the c5 pawn, white has a strong move queen b4, and the end game after queen takes b4 is clearly in white's favor. White can take both with A or C pawn. In both cases, it will be better for white. Two strong bishops, pressure on A7 in this position as well. Also more space on the uh, king side. So white has a clear advantage in this case. So black correctly played knight A6 first. So now his idea is to play knight D to C5. And I will be unable to trade queens with queen B4. Uh, in this position, I, I was thinking for uh, at least half an hour. Because it looks uh, very dangerous to take the pawn on e6. Because the queen gets under attack very soon. And uh, both c3 and c5 pawns are under attack. But uh, I couldn't find anything better. I tried all different ideas. Here's something like bishop takes a6 and then black can take both ways in fact. Black can take with the queen and then the knight is getting to e5 to my weak light squares. c4 is also weak. Black can even take with the b pawn opening the b file for his rook. And even this idea might be pretty dangerous. No, my opponent didn't really see uh, that game because he, he was thinking for a very long time before uh, uh, finding this idea of f6. Uh, so I, I realized bishop takes x6 wouldn't be good. If I allow knight d to, to c, knight d takes c5, black is going to get a nice position. So I should go for queen takes e6 basically. Queen e6 check, and he played king h8. In fact, most of the time I uh, was thinking about the move king to h7. And it seems that uh, this is a better option. In some lines it's important that the king is not on the back rank and doesn't get under attack. For instance, uh, like in the line which happened in the game, let's say if I still play bishop d4, Black plays knight e5 with the discovered attack. And say after the move queen e7, rook f7, the move queen e8 is not a check. That, that's one of the reasons I thought the king will be safer on uh, h7. But he played king to h8. And now I had a very simple and strong move at the same time. Uh, king to f2. The reason is that black's direct threat is queen takes c3 with a double attack on e1 and a1. And this c5 pawn is lost anyway. So I'm, I don't need to protect this pawn. So what I have to do, I have to deal with the main threat of queen takes c3. And king f2 was the correct way to do so. And it turns out that white's chances uh, are higher in this position. Instead, I played bishop d4. I thought it might be a good idea to put my bishop on, uh, to protect the c3 pawn and put my bishop onto this diagonal. So I may have a chance to play g5 at some position and after h takes h6, opening up uh, black's uh, king side. His reaction was uh, correct, knight d takes c5. The queen goes to e7, attacking the rook on f8. And now his only move, bishop takes g4, a nice uh, sacrifice, which I expected, but uh, I couldn't really do much about it. 
So uh, the point is that if I take with the F pawn, Black's attack after rook eight uh, might be decisive. Extremely strong with my king uh, in the center. The e4 pawn is falling. And so I prepared the move bishop takes a6 first. The point is that he cannot take back with the queen since his knight is hanging. And I want to force the knight uh, back to a6. And then the knight is not participating in the attack. So as soon as he takes my bishop with a knight, I can take his bishop on g4. In fact, during the game, I saw that uh, he had a, str a strong option of knight to b3. This looks like a very interesting move, which attacks both a1 and d4. After he gets the bishop on d4, the c3 pawn will be also under attack. But in fact, it turns out that knight b3 is a mistake and black can, white can just play queen to b4. Queen takes, a takes. Black wins the rook on a1. But white takes a b7 pawn. Rook a b8, bishop d5. This is a rather forced line. The knight goes to c2. King d2, knight takes d4. Black takes the bishop on g4, knight b5 and knight e2. And even though white has only one pawn for the exchange, white's, pos white's position is much better. A very strong bishop. The knight is coming to the weak squares. And uh, uh, that's very unpleasant for black. And my opponent played the correct move again. Knight takes a6 instead of going to b3. Now I took the bishop on g4. And the f rook goes to e8. And in fact, uh, only this move is a mistake. Here my opponent had to come to e8 with the other rook. Rook a to e8. And after I take with the queen, he can bring his knight into attack with the tempo. Knight to c5. It turns out in the raising complications, uh, the position is rather equal. Obviously, I didn't calculate all of these lines. That's already uh, a computer analysis after the game. And okay, the position is still very complicated. Okay, we will not go on. We'll just see what happened in the game. Uh, my opponent played rook f to e8 instead. And then the queen went to f7. Even though computer says queen takes b7 is the best move, but uh, in, the, uh, uh, in the game I thought that uh, giving up the b file is extremely dangerous. Also, black's rook can get to b2. And even though computer shows there is a defense in this position, I believe my move queen f7 is more practical. So black to rook takes e4. The king goes to f2. And now the decisive mistake from black, the move which is rather natural, rook a to e8. Black doubles his rooks on the e file. Looks, a very, looks like a very logical idea. But in fact, uh, the, only, uh, uh, the only move in this position is uh, the greedy rook takes g4. Now I can take the e file under control with queen e6, but black plays rook f4 check. Knight f3 brings his knight with the tempo again. Queen e7. Knight d3, king e3, queen f5. Again, a very interesting position here. Knight h4, queen takes h5. Now rook a to g1, creating a threat of checkmate in one and a threat of knight g6. But black can play rook e8, pinning my queen. 
Still knight g6 check, queen takes, rook takes, rook takes e7 and king takes d3. And we reach an endgame with the bishop versus three pawns, which uh, gives uh, white uh, some advantage, but uh, black retains uh, drawish chances in this position. Instead he played rook a to e8, and uh, this allowed me to uh, develop uh, the knight, knight f3, high Christopher, rook e2 check, and king to g1. Uh, this is probably the safest. My idea is to bring this rook to f1, and if I need to cover the g3 square, I have the other rook, which can come to h3. He played queen b5, the rook came to f1. There is also an interesting uh, uh, direct win with bishop takes f6. g takes, queen takes, the king goes to h7. Queen g6 check, king h8, queen takes h6 check, king g8, queen g6 check, king h8, check from f6, king g8 and h6. And uh, white threats are decisive. Instead, I played rook f1, which is also enough uh, uh, to win the game. Black tried rook a to e4 in order to bring the rook to g4. White plays rook h4 simply protecting the pawn and now my idea is to play g4 g5 next move to finally get to black's king and after g5 i'll be threatening to play queen f8 follow, followed by g6 if he captures the pawn i can push h6 and capturing with the f pawn is impossible as it opens uh, my uh, dark squared bishop and queen g7 will be a checkmate so after rook h4 he played queen c6, g5, white can also start with queen f8 check and only then g5, but in both cases white's position is winning. Now he took uh, h takes g5 and after the move h6 uh, had to resign. So as you can see, the idea of h4 also allowed me to win again, a game. And uh, it's very important to know this type of ideas in the opening. So th this, uh, these two examples show importance of this idea of h4, h5 in many different lines. And uh, they allow, uh, the idea allowed me to win two last rounds in the last two tournaments. So that's, that's very important. Okay, let's go on and see another example. Uh, this example is uh, again from a tournament in uh, Portugal, which I played uh, right before the Canadian tournament. My opponent, uh, uh, my opponent was the international uh, master Brouwer France. So he played e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and d4. That's one of the possible openings which I expected in this game. So e takes d4, knight takes d4, knight f6, knight takes c6, b takes c6, e5. All of this is well known theory. Black pins the e5 pawn with queen e7, white plays queen e2, the knight goes to d5, c2, c4, bishop to a6, and here I expected mainly his uh, move knight d2, which he uh, played in most of his uh, previous games, 
But I also briefly looked at the move B3, which is in fact uh, uh, the main line. And I'm pretty sure that he uh, also looked at my games in this system. And uh, I mainly played here, here the move uh, G7, G6, which is also the main line. And this may lead to uh, either a very complicated position after bishop a3, then bishop b2, a lot of complications here. And, uh, and so on. For instance, this position occurred in the recent game Caruana with Liso in V and Z this early this year and another option uh, uh, for white after g6 is the move g3 and this one leads to an interesting uh, theoretical endgame this type of endgame it can also occur if black castles long. Uh, thank you, Liming. So the, this is considered to be roughly equal uh, uh, theoretical endgame. Uh, but in this game, I decided to surprise my opponent in, and play after b3, the move queen to h4. Uh, the idea behind this move is very direct. White, black wants to play queen d4. And after bishop to b2, bishop b4. And black and white has uh, serious problems. For instance, if white plays g3, this may happen. And white loses the game right away. So... Um, White played a3, which is the main move here. White is just covering the b4 square, and so uh, black doesn't have bishop b4 check anymore, and then the idea of queen d4 also makes no sense. White can simply answer queen d4 with bishop to b2. And uh, what I prepared at home, I thought that in case he goes for the line with b3, I'll play queen h4. And after the move a3, I'll go for knight to f4. In fact, there is a reasonable line for black. White plays queen e4. And then knight to g6. And somehow this idea took my opponent off guard. He started sinking and uh, making uh, some uh, mistakes. So uh, the main move in this position is just taking the queen on h4. Black takes back with the knight. Then knight to d2. Black plays bishop b7 with the idea of uh, pushing the c pawn to c5 and putting pressure on, uh, on the long diagonal, on the g2 pawn. So white played g2, g3. Black, Black plays c5 in this position. And now there are two possible ways of playing. One of them is uh, an exchange sacrifice with g takes h4 and then uh, an attempt to trap the bishop on h1 with the move f3 but it turns out that black is still doing fine here after bishop e7 king f2 and rook to b8 a very nice move the idea is to meet the move uh, king g1 with bishop takes f3 knight takes f3 and rook takes b3 so it's better to play rook b1 Then black can just play a5, preparing the move a4 as well. So white can play a4, then bishop takes, king g1. The bishop gets trapped on h1, but uh, uh, black uh, still gets some counterplay. 
bishop g5, king takes h1, black castles. And it turns out that uh, uh, black uh, creates counterplay in this position and, and the chances are probably roughly equal. So that's one of the ways uh, for uh, white to play this position. Instead of the move uh, g takes h4, white can also try rook g1. But then black simply goes knight f5 and brings the knight to d4. Long castling, black can play h5, king b1, a5, and the black has a good position here. So all of this could have happened if uh, white took on h4. But instead he decided to keep queens on the board and played queen to e3. It may look uh, like a reasonable idea because my queen h on h4 gets under attack very soon and so my next move is rather logical c6 c5 so now in case of g2 g3 i can play queen d4 for instance g3 queen d4 after exchange on d4 the e5 pawn is hanging so white has to play f4 protecting that pawn and then i play c7 c5 I mean, first bishop b7, sorry, a5, and eventually c5, protecting the d4 pawn, and black gets a good position. So uh, he, he played bishop b2 instead of g3, taking the d4 square under control, and now he's ready to play g3 uh, on the very next move. And I realize that my uh, best move uh, would be just playing queen f4. And after exchange of queens, white plays g3. I can come back to e6, once again towards the nice square on d4. And uh, black's position is fine here. White can also start with the move rook g1. And once again, black will play knight e6 bishop b7 and this position is fine uh, but uh, during the game i thought that i can try a different idea uh, i played bishop b7 which is in fact slightly inaccurate from the other hand it looks uh, very natural to put the bishop on this uh, diagonal So uh, now in case of the move uh, g3, black can play queen to e4. I have to admit that during the game I had the wrong idea in mind. I was thinking about playing queen to h6, allowing doubling of my pawns on the h file and after rook g1, rook g8. The point is that uh, now I can uh, bring my knight to h4 maybe to f4 sometimes, using the pin on the g-file. But in according to computer, white is just better in this position. Something like this may happen, and uh, this position is uh, better for white. But uh, after g3, I can also play queen e4. And after exchange of uh, queens, rook g1, black can play bishop c2, attacking the b3 pawn, and after knight d2, rook to b8. Once again, putting pressure on b3. And so, uh, basically, white uh, needed to play like this, to play g3 in this position, with uh, maybe slightly better chances. Instead, he played knight to d2, an inaccurate move, which I answered uh, with a long uh, castling. Once again, queen f4 is a very good alternative, which I also decided to avoid. 
So long castling, knight f3, and finally queen f4. So now when I uh, when I am forced to play queen f4, I am playing this move. But uh, White's problem is that after exchange of queens on f4, the g2 pawn also gets under attack. I may play bishop takes f3 in some position, creating uh, weak uh, pawns on the king's side. And so after the move queen f4, white already has to be precise not to get in trouble. And what he did was a big mistake. He played knight to g5. His idea is very obvious. He wants to trade queens and get my f7 pawn. And in fact, I considered this idea and saw that I can just sacrifice the pawn and he will waste a lot of time with his knight and it will be very dangerous for black. Instead of the move knight g5, the correct way of playing would be surprisingly the move uh, h2, h4. And then after I take on f3, g takes f3 White is threatening with the move h5, which would force me to take on e3, which I don't want to do. So it's important to play rook e8 first. Now in case of h5, I can even play knight takes e5, and after the capture on f4, I have this double check and I get back the queen. So after rook e8, uh, white can uh, castle long. And then I can just take on e3 and take on e5. White plays bishop h3, putting pressure on my d7 pawn. And then I can play bishop to d6, f4, and knight to f3. Attacking the e3 pawn. And black is doing fine in this position. Nevertheless, uh, White had to play h4. This would be much better than what he played in the game. He played the move knight to g5, which I answered with rook to e8. Now the e5 pawn is under attack. And so white has to trade queens and take the f7 pawn and then simply rook uh, g8 white won a pawn but he wasted at least two moves and also his knight on f7 finds uh, itself in some danger i am about to trap this knight and if uh, if he comes back with this knight knight g5 then i can play h6 knight f3 the simple bishop takes f3, g takes f3, and bishop d6. Black wins back the e5 pawn. Exchanges the dark squared bishops. The bishop on f1 will be extremely weak. Also the pawn structure on the king's side is very bad. And black has a clear advantage in this line. So... Uh, in fact, after rook g8, uh, black's chances are uh, already much higher. But uh, black's best defense would be against the move h4. And this time it's not that surprising because black has a threat of uh, g5. The point of g5 is to prevent white from bringing the knight back. And that's why it was necessary to play h4. Black can play h6, still stopping the knight from getting to g5. But it turns out it's not so easy to trap the knight now. White can play king to d2. If I play a move like rook e7, white can play e6 and then the knight escapes from e5. So black needs to play knight e6 first to stop this idea and prepare the move rook e7. But then white has another defensive idea, bishop to d3. Preparing the move bishop to h7, trapping my rook on g8. 
So I need to play g6 to stop this idea and then h4, h5. Another point of the move, uh, h2, h4. Uh, black takes the pawn, g takes h5, rook takes, and now black takes the g2 pawn. Rook f1, bishop g7, white's, uh, white's position is still worse, but that would be much better than what happened in the game. And in the game he played rook to g1, protecting the g2 pawn, moving the rook away from this diagonal, but the main problem here is the move g7, g5. So now the knight gets uh, stuck on f7. White castles. And then just a the simple move knight f4 to e6. Once again, if I play rook e7 first, white can play e6 and escape with the knight. So that's why it's important to block the e-pawn. And now rook e7 is a big threat. Uh, during the game I saw that black's, white's only defense in this position is bishop to d3. And then if I play rook e7, he can try bishop takes h7. Attacking my rook on g8. I can play rook g7 and it may seem that white just loses a piece, but in, in fact he has a nice trick knight d6 check. If I move my king away then he simply takes the bishop and escapes with his bishop. And if I take c takes d6, white takes, attacking both of my rooks, rook takes h7. D takes e7, bishop takes e7, f3, rook takes h2. Black still has a clear advantage in this position, but even easier probably after the move bishop d3 is to play h6 first. Saving this pawn and only then uh, going for uh, rook e7. And here uh, black should be able to win without big problems. Uh, nevertheless, uh, white uh, should have tried to play bishop d3. That would be the uh, last chance in this game. Instead, he played f2, f4. In order to meet my move rook e7 with f5, followed by e6, and once again the knight can uh, escape. But I can simply take this pawn on f4 with g takes f4. Rook e7 is again a big threat. So he tried to protect the knight by means of bishop h5. The rook goes to e7 attacking the knight. Bishop h5. And now a very simple rook takes g2. Okay, I cannot really win the knight yet, but uh, what I can do, I can get the g2 pawn. Now black is up a pawn and the f pawn is also extremely dangerous and it will go forward very soon. Now uh, white tried this trick with knight d6. C takes, e takes. I played rook e to g7. So bishop takes, bishop takes. Black uh, obtains two minor pieces uh, versus uh, rook. Very strong bishops on b7 and g7, a strong passed pawn. And bla uh, basically uh, white is just hopeless in this position. He played uh, a couple of moves. Rook g2, bishop g2, king d2, f3, and realized that he cannot even stop advance of the f-pawn. And so he resigned. So uh, once again, uh, a good uh, opening preparation allowed me to get a nice position out of the opening. What is also important to take your opponent out of book and eventually win the game. So... Uh, 
I believe uh, this uh, will be good for today. I want to thank uh, everyone uh, for uh, watching. And uh, I'll see you all uh, very soon.